Welcome to another episode of The, the Epic, Epic Family, Family Road, Road Trip, The Empty Nest Edition. Back in 2016, we started our family journey in a 24-foot Winnebago motorhome. As the kids grew up, we moved into the Jeeps to be able to access more off-pavement wilderness areas. Today, we're heading south to the facility where our motorhome is still in storage. We plan to drive it back east with us and eventually put it up for sale. Wow, I got hit with glass from that one. Shattered glass, it's on my arm. Whew. And that was right coming at me. Scared. We had this chip um, way up north from a truck going by at high speeds and something falling off it or a rock kicked up by the tires. And now this one, which was, that just surprised me. It was very scary and I got glass all over me, thankfully not in my eyes. But we're gonna have to go up the road and kind of brush off this, uh, these shards of glass. Crazy stuff, man. Be careful out there. Southern BC, we are in White Rock or Surrey, I guess, at the RV park where we left our motorhome a couple of years ago, if you remember that. And uh, we're gonna go check on it, make sure it still runs and um, give it uh, cleaning and just, they have to run every once in a while. And our goal is to sell it at some point, but we're gonna take a look at it, probably spend one night here Picking some stuff up that we left in there when we uh, took off last time. And we're going to decide between now and tomorrow whether we're going to drive it all the way back east and sell it out there. So we'll let you know what happens. Well, we have jumping cables. All right, we're gonna let that charge for a bit and uh, give her a boost. It's been sitting still for at least two years and uh, I'm sure all the batteries are drained. And then uh, we'll get it going. We're gonna pull it out. We've got a spot in the overflow over there for the night and uh, kind of get things sorted out. But it's in perfect shape. It's super clean in there just how we left it. They have really good rodent control here at the storage facility. So we put out these uh, mouse pads and they're empty so nothing got in there. But I'm really happy, just a initial inspection and she's in perfect shape. The flood of memories that came back just when I walked in there and opened the side door. I mean, I could, I could almost tear up thinking about little Dan, Pete and Caroline when we set out on this epic journey. We had never heard of overlanding, we just wanted to get out and see the great parks and get away from everything and just go and uh, man, we drove that thing towing Vandy up and down mountains, went to every state and every province and uh, all in the course of about one year crazy we had to move all the way up to Alaska all the way up to Newfoundland that thing was just the perfect vehicle for us in the first couple of years and then we got into more backcountry overlanding and that's why the Jeeps I hesitate to sell it because it's just it's a part of our family now but um, if there's a, a reason to you know Everyone says, well, keep it, it's paid off, you're gonna lose money selling it, and that's probably true to a certain extent. But um, 
you know, there is some logic in maybe selling it and then putting that money towards a more permanent vehicle for us. The Jeeps like this are absolute adventure vehicles, but if we're doing more international, more long term, we have to keep our eyes open for a bigger vehicle. So anyway, those are, that's the thought process. We're not in any hurry to get rid of anything or to move on to anything. We're very happy and having a lot of fun with our existing configuration. But anyway, oh, I could talk about memories all day. We sent a picture to the kids over in, overseas and uh, same thing, the memories start flooding. So anyway, there it is. Sounded better. It's warming up a bit. We'll probably have to drive it, you know. Oh, for sure. But let's see if I can get it. There we go. That's good. It's idling nice and smooth now. Good. Well, I just got to put everything back in place and uh, we're good to go. That was a nice quiet sleep coming in i think pete forgot that we had the rv <laughs> he was looking for some spots and i was just watching following behind him and i'm like i yeah i don't know if he remembers he's in an rv and not in a four-wheel drive but uh we found a spot and it was great we have the whole week of driving ahead of us but uh we're excited and uh we're excited to get back to the island we've got some work to do before winter and the kids are coming home so Lots of fun adventures ahead. Stoke and Golden and man is it ever spectacular here. There's already snow in the high elevations. It's raining where we are but uh, snowing up above. Actually I see some snowflakes coming down this low but it's uh, it's not any danger of sticking on the road. But This is an area we need to do a lot more exploration and uh, there's camp spots and hiking trails and just a lot of absolute raw nature and beauty all around. So. We'll be coming back here sometime when we're not, not in a hurry. Beautiful spot, the sun's coming out. This is such a crystal clear river. Last time we were here, the salmon were, young salmon were in the water in big groups of like 25 of them. Be a nice spot to spend the night though. It's cold mood.
absolutely stunning around here. So we just came up through Yoho Park and we're now in uh, Banff, or just coming into Alberta, into Banff. On a clear day, it's just mind-boggling how beautiful. Rocky Mountains all around us, just gorgeous. Good morning, we just had a great night's sleep here. Right beside the Trans Canada, this is a, a rest stop where they allow camping. So we just parked over there and uh, this is central Saskatchewan. Today we're heading all the way across Manitoba into Ontario. So looking forward to getting home on time to see the kids. Good morning, with a beautiful sunrise behind us. Had a great sleep here. We're just off the Trans Canada. Now we're gonna be pushing east, try to get to Thunder Bay if we can. After 38 days on the road and almost 16,000 kilometers or 10,000 miles of what has been an incredible journey, we just have a short boat ride across the lake and we are back at the cabin. Wow, how cozy! You're there, buddy. You made it. <laughs> This is exciting. The boys will probably be here around 10 o'clock tonight and there's a good moon, so that's nice. I always like when there's a little bit of light for them to cross the water. 
We're so excited to see them. In the background, we've got a load of wood and um, siding and plywood and insulation coming off. We're building a 10 by 12 uh, shed. Uh, tomorrow is gonna be a day of hauling that stuff in, but works out great because the boys are actually on their way back from Iceland and they're gonna get in uh, pretty late tonight, but they'll be uh, ready to go to give me a hand hauling that stuff across the lake tomorrow. All right, it's about 9.30 or maybe, I guess it's around 10 o'clock and uh, the boys just arrived. Um, Carol's back at the cabin and she can't wait to see them so we're not gonna delay too much. Yeah. We're just getting their bags and we're gonna head across the lake. Oh. Come on, Lenny. Come on, Lenny. Wow. <laughs> What is that? Say that, wait. This is the statue. Well, in Trondheim, pretty early on in the trip wow. at uh, the Nidaros Cathedral. Is that the one that was made out of the... Yeah, yeah. the plaster of the, wow. the plaster church. of the actual... Oh, neat. The whole they made a couple of the statues where the best wool was, and it was like the hand-knit society or something. <laughs> so we eventually got there and got one. So that was Aw, thank you. Apparently the warmest and the best. I like the color. <laughs> the guy isn't real. Oh. Oh, I love the colors. There was darker ones, but it's like everything, every wool sweater you've got so far is dark, so that one's kind of neat. I love the color. Oh, happy to be back. Well, I'm happy to have you guys been wow. safe. Yeah, of course we've got our mugs. Nice. Wait, Handmade. Clay mugs. That's Pretty. really neat. Mm, yeah. Those are fun. So exciting morning. I am picking up Caroline. She had a direct flight from Toronto to our local area airport, but um, last night she had, her flight was delayed. So she missed the last uh, shuttle up here. So she had to uh, stay in a hotel, poor girl, because she just wanted to be home and we missed her so much. And now I'm just a few minutes away from getting her. So super excited. Can't wait to see her. Missed her so much. So, How's Caroline? Can't contain himself. It's awesome. Good morning. Today is shed building day. We've already got one load of uh, materials in here. The boys are heading out to help load the uh, pontoon and get another one. And I think that'll be it. And uh, we're starting to dig the footings for the shed and then uh, we're going to start building. Exciting times.
There's a big storm blowing in. We got to get all the tools and as much wood up as we can. There's a bunch of plywood sitting by the water, so we're racing out there. Woo! Ooh, that really soaked me. It's getting wet. See in the background, the shop is coming along nicely. Um, it's all closed in, it's insulated, they're finished the interior. I think the only thing left now, once they're done wrapping up what they're doing, is putting the siding on. Um, we got a little bit delayed by weather. In fact, it's still windy, the system is moving out of the area. We had a good storm blowing, but uh, they were able to keep working inside. So I think we're uh, we're pretty much there. We're gonna have to do the siding ourselves. So that'll be a learning curve for uh, Dan, Pete and I, but uh, I'm sure we can figure it out. The main reason we built it insulated like this is to keep our batteries warm. As you know, lithium batteries, if they get really cold, will no longer perform. And so, uh, you know, that would be an issue. And it gets really cold up here in the winter. So that and propane tanks and then a few other things. So this is gonna be a very useful building for us. and. Uh, we look forward to getting all the stuff Carol has currently in our screened in port moved into here onto the shelves. She's gonna be very, very happy when that happens. Audio test and setup test. My brothers and I recently returned from filming the Nordic series with Expedition Overland, where we spent about eight weeks traveling throughout the Nordic countries in Scandinavia. And it's been pretty crazy to think back now that we have time, now that we're kind of settled down after being on the pace of being on a film crew and filming a documentary, actually sitting down and thinking back to everything that we did and experienced and everything we saw and the people we met, it's just unbelievable. A lot of those places, especially Faroe Islands and Iceland, have been on uh, my bucket list for a long time of places that I wanted to travel to. So it was really cool to get to see them. Well, that was just such an incredible time with Clay and the whole crew. Can't wait for everyone to be able to see it. The video should be coming out in January. 
Um, X Overland will be posting those on YouTube. I mean, I left here saying I, uh, I had an interest in learning more about the Nordic culture and Vikings and that whole history and how it'll be cool to go visit those places and hopefully see some stuff. And I got to see a lot more than what I was even anticipating. And that, that was super incredible. It was seriously just such an epic, epic adventure and experience with the most amazing crew. And I'm so, so thankful to Clay and the entire crew for everything. Yeah, I feel like I, I learned a lot on that trip. I was, I carried a lot of uh, similar roles to the other two expeditions I was on, but this time I got to learn a lot about photography from Tanner and Richard, who are both awesome photographers. And it's something I've always been interested in. So being able to learn in the field and especially in cool places like Iceland, was definitely a dream come true for me. I'm also very excited to be back. I think we came back at a good time. It's still beautiful weather and we can enjoy the last of the fall colors, which have been particularly vibrant and beautiful this year. Now we're gonna be focusing on firewood and everything else. Um, something we've been talking about is since we're on a lake, we've gotta be worried about, I mean, we wanna do a lot of hiking and skiing potentially and a lot of other things, so. We've got to worry about flotation of some kind and you know we've kind of been taking a peek online at flotation jackets and and bibs or maybe life jackets inflate as soon as they hit the water and we had snow this morning and uh, you can really tell that winter's coming for the last few years pretty much we've avoided winter weather by going south or staying in the southern states staying in the desert which has always been very nice but it'll be just a little more challenging, you know. Everything, everything is already a little more challenging living off the, in on a remote island in a cabin, off the grid. Um, but I wonder what things will be new challenges or become even more challenging potentially in the winter with ice and snow and freezing cold. It's definitely a challenge. Like it's not going to be easy by any means, but it's definitely one I look forward to a lot. It's something I've dreamed about forever. I love it up here, and uh, it's going to be a totally different world in the winter time. Obviously there's a lot of preparation involved and uh, I think we're kind of wrapping up most of them as far as food and um, other things go, equipment, uh, like safety equipment and stuff. There's a few more things we need to purchase but I think after that we'll be good to go. When you're in Iceland we got to meet a lot of awesome people and in Faroe Islands as well in Norway um, and you know we mentioned to some of them what we're doing here and they recommended a lot of things, especially safety flotation devices for if you break through the ice. So that's something we're going to be looking into getting uh, within the next coming days. We'll be heading out tomorrow to get more wood and uh, I'm excited. And in the meantime, we'll, we'll see you down the road. road.